Video game journalists will continue to try and spin a narrative. It does not matter if you, the paying customer, have certain thoughts, opinions, or views. You are not the elite. You are not the person whose brain is so trained to understand the finest points of these, you know, zeros and ones on the screen, these pixels, and they will try and tell you that you are wrong. Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and Pal World is being compared to... Hogwarts Legacy, because we have not heard enough about that game. In an article titled, Power World is just a reminder that the most popular games aren't always the best. If they are not trying to send a message about what they consider high caliber gaming and what you, the individual, should be spending your money on, I don't know what they are doing. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We're going to cover this. Free speech is tantamount in nerd culture, and it seems like we are running out of it lately. So hit the button, subscribe to the channel so that we can keep nerd speech and free speech flowing together one in one, and let's get into this article. Power World is just a reminder that the most popular games aren't always the best. What do Hogwarts Legacy and the potential Pokemon knockoff have in common? Well, one is likely to be the highest grossing game of 2024, while the other one was the highest grossing game of 2023, proving once and for all that uh, these are things that fans, consumers, paying customers are actually looking for in their games, things that they actually want. So clearly these companies are doing something right, even if they've had so much shade lambasted at them by the upper echelon of the gaming community. And I, just, I love, look at this, look at this picture right here like I've, I've seen Hogwarts Legacy it runs great it's got some gorgeous visuals look at how ugly this model is they either they either pulled an intentionally bad uh, quality uh, picture for this little you know thumbnail for this promo right here or they're maybe using like a, a very downgraded switch version or last gen version but they they're going out of their way just to visually try and uh, force you guys with their propaganda to think that Hogwarts Legacy is not a good game and maybe not necessarily a game for everyone but it definitely is not a bad game Power World released in early access last week and since then has sold a completely unexpected 4 million copies across PC and Xbox, despite also having released for free on Xbox Game Pass. And that should go to tell you guys something. Yeah, it released for free on Xbox Game Pass, but people are still paying for it. You want to know what that means? It means there's a market for things that people enjoy. People will pay money for something they consider to be a good product. I don't know why that is mind-blowing to the individuals over here at The Gamer. I don't know why they think it's free. Why wouldn't they play the free version? Why would they pay for it? Well, believe it or not, not all, are full, uh, not all gamers are full-on communists who believe that that everything should be free and equal for everybody. Yeah, if, if something is good, if you want to put in the work, then pay for it because paying for it, since it's an early access, will only get them to develop the game even better. So I don't know why it's so shocking to them that their people are actually paying for the game, but that should say something if people want to spend their hard-earned money in this insane recession that we're in on this game. It's already one of the most played games of all time on Steam, being one of the six games on the platform to ever have more than a million concurrent players. I, that is bananas to me. I, I'm so happy for the fact that Power World has that. One of only six games to ever have more than a million concurrent players. That is incredible. And with an all-time peak of 1,291,967 uh, players, that puts it right behind PUBG, Battlegrounds, Counter-Strike 2, Lost Ark, and Dota 2. And I do believe that this, since this article has come out, it's actually taken the second place spot only behind PUBG, Battlegrounds. It did end up beating out Counter-Strike, Lost Ark, and Dota 2. It's shocking success from indie studio Pocket Pair, who I do want to say, in full disclosure, I referred to as a Chinese studio in my last uh, in my last video. They are a Japanese studio. I was wrong. I don't know if that changes a whole hell of a lot about the argument, but I do want to you know correct for the record. Pocket Pair is a Japanese studio, and I I'd like to you know just acknowledge when I get wrong things wrong and correct myself for the record. Though perhaps not entirely unpredictable, the game's re uh, reveal drew a lot of attention on social media, garnering itself as the unofficial tagline "Pokemon with guns," and even had people speculating that the game was fake. There was plenty of press and audience attention on the game, and that combined with word of mouth throughout its release weekend propelled it to an instant success. But here's the dealio. You guys all know about this. You know, everyone's been talking about Power World. I've already made a video on Power World. Let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about, you know, why it's being compared to Hogwarts Legacy. So we're gonna get through this paragraph real quick, which just covers, you know, some pocket pairs, uh, you know, it's being accused of using AI to design its pals, and though these claims are largely unsubstantiated, pocket pairs use generative artificial intelligence in previous games. Uh, it's also been dawed by accusations of plagiarism. So we're getting the negative stuff out of the way. They're saying the same thing that everyone else who's whining and whinging about it being a Pokemon clone are saying. They're looking for any reason to throw shade because... 
Let's be real, the gamer doesn't like actual real life gamers having fun because actual real life gamers don't go along with the you know, agenda and propaganda and message peddling and full on gaming socialism that outlets like the gamer tries to push on you and tries to make the default for the hobby and for the community. So yeah, when they see the community getting into a game that is problematic of some sorts, they're gonna run defense for everything else and go full on attack mode, which is why they're comparing it to Hogwarts Legacy, a game that they, I'm, I'm sure they still believe was only purchased by transphobes and KKK members across the United States. The controversy is reminding me of last year's discourse about Hogwarts Legacy. You wanna know why there's discourse about Hogwarts Legacy last year? Because you pushed it, the gamer. Outlets like you and IGN and Game Rant, you pushed this discourse. If it weren't for outlets like yours and weren't for you know journalists like who you have employed, people would have been like, oh, cool, Harry Potter game. I'm a Harry Potter fan. Let's buy it. But you pushed all the controversy. You wanted to push for boycotts. You wanted to talk about the transphobia. So if this is reminding you of the discourse, it's discourse that you started and then failed at you know avoiding and failed at living up to because it did go on to be the top selling game of 2023. So don't try and twist the narrative like, oh, we were just journalists covering this discourse. No, you sowed the discord of this discourse. The Harry Potter spinoff sold 22 million copies in 2023, generating over a billy in revenue. Over a billy, it's so damn incredible. Players loved it, leading to huge sales, while critics were mixed about it. Yeah, you know, actually, if, if I recall, the majority of independent critics also loved it. It was just your outlets. It was just the, the prestigious outlets like Game Rant and The Gamer that gave it the mixed to negative opinions, uh, all because of nothing to do with the gameplay, but... Oh, my transphobia, the JK Rowling dollar. So again, they're trying to minimize this because they've been proven wrong. They've been proven that gamers will go out and buy things that they support and that they want, and not a damn bit of politics or propaganda is going to keep gamers from doing that. So now, when they're doing this article, I get what they're trying to do, and frankly, I appreciate it. It's kind of sly, kind of sneaky. They're trying to be all real low, be real casual about it, like they had nothing to do with it, like they had no input on it. They were just covering the news in a purely unbiased fashion, but anyone that follows follows gaming journalism and follows game news knows that is not the case, so this is going to fall on deaf ears for anyone that's got any sort of education. While some publications gave the game glowing reviews, others highlighted that it was unoriginal. In what way was it unoriginal? Just, just curious, because they don't exactly go on to explain how it was unoriginal, they just call it unoriginal. They say it lacked innovation, once again, I'm not sure how it lacked innovation. I would imagine if a game sells, you know, 23 million copies, however much it sold, there was something there to offer the players. Uh, I've played many a Harry Potter game in the past. I don't know what any Harry Potter game has done that this one did, because if that was the case, why weren't all the other Harry Potter games multi-billion dollar sellers? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me they claimed that it was unoriginal, lacked innovation, when... Everyone I know seems to have really enjoyed the game, <laughs> and it had technical issues. Well, first of all, actually didn't have technical issues, anything compared to something like Jedi Survivor that outlets like yours gave glowing reviews to. Uh, if it had technical issues at all, I only know a couple people that played it day one, Cult Classic Cage, Hypnotic. I don't remember them talking about any technical issues. I'm not saying they weren't there. Pretty much all games have technical issues day one nowadays. Also, this was a, a small studio. It's a double-A studio, so any sort of technical issues... Uh, they were pretty much taken care of not long after launch because it didn't hinder the game's sales in any way, shape, or form. And of course, there was also plenty of debate over the fact that J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter books and owner of the IP, has made transphobic comments and buying the game was tantamount to putting money in her pocket. And here's the th they want to bring up all this previous discourse and link it to Pal World. If they can get gamers who are undecided or who aren't familiar with the culture war issues, if they can get these types of gamers to, to look at Pal World, maybe they haven't played Pal World yet, maybe they haven't tried it, maybe they haven't paid for it, if they can get these gamers look at Pal World and associate it with Hogwarts Legacy and all the controversy and people being afraid to stream it, people being afraid to talk about it on social media for fear of cancellation, then that's going to be a win for them. They're digging it any last little bit of hope they can to just scrounge for that culture war dollar and to get their propaganda to win at the end of the day. But that's not happening. It's not going to happen. We've already seen the insane amount of sales for Pal World, and it's only going to get bigger from there. So it's, it's insane to me. It's also kind of impressive that they're willing to dredge up this old Hogwarts Legacy stuff that we I, I just thought had been put to bed. I didn't think there would be any other reason to ever talk about Hogwarts Legacy again. But here the gamer finds a way. <laughs> Many people were uncomfortable with. At the end, of the, while Hogwarts Legacy made a ton of money, it got almost no awards, and it got almost no awards 
because the Game Awards are political. They were afraid because of outlets like you of being labeled as transphobic, as being labeled as unsafe, a place that isn't okay for queer people and LGBTQ, LMNOPISTUV people, nothing like that. So yeah, of course when the Game Awards come out, which are meaningless awards that don't mean anything anyway, of course it got no awards. It didn't even get nominated for any awards because they were scared because of what you did to the culture, you fake lying outrage baiting gaming article of gaming journalism. The gamer isn't real news. It's not real gaming news. I remember being subscribed to Nintendo Power and Game Informer magazine growing up because that was real news. You were not even a shadow of a shadow of their former selves. Not to mention that gamers quickly fell out of love with it and moved on to the next best thing because it was a single player game. Unlike Power World, it's not an online multiplayer experience. This is clearly a single player narrative driven game. You play through it, you finish, you move on. I, I, I really don't get what's difficult to understand about that, and again, I believe they actually do understand that, but they've got to find something to, to drive home their point, and they hope that people don't use any sort of common sense. Both games are controversial for different reasons. Neither game is controversial. Both games have idiots talking about them in fashions and methods that they don't know anything about. Now, you could say that Power World is controversial because of the AI stuff and because of the plagiarism and because of Nintendo. I would say the vast majority of people don't care. That's why it has sold, you know, all the copies that it sold. That's why it has all the people playing it. Because real, regular, average, everyday gamers don't care. You know who cares? Journalists and Nintendo fanboys who feel the need to bend over backwards to defend the multi-billion dollar company, of which, again, I'm usually a part of, but not this time because it just takes a little bit of common damn sense. Both Leon IP, Hogwarts Legacy on the licensed Harry Potter universe, and Power World on the Pokemon IP it's continually compared to. Both released at least a little bit broken, and I can't help but see more commonalities with other video games that flew up the shelves of the best-selling games of the last 10 years. By sales, 20 out of 27 were based on existing IP. Well, that's because existing IP could mean other video games, and these are sequels. Take The Last of Us 2. Now, I loathe, like many people, loathe The Last of Us 2, but I got all these awards, all these accolades, it flew up the shelves and made sales. Wanna know why? I mean, that's also an IP-based game. It's the sequel in the Last of Us series. All, I, I, I don't get how that's a bad thing if 20 of the last 27 were based on existing IP. That just means that franchises are strong and still making money and still go in the distance. How is that a bad thing? Most use the hype cycle of being part of a franchise to push themselves into prominence. Even comparing the list of Game of the Year winners to list of best-selling games of the year, you'll show that in the last decade, the game that critics have agreed is the best never has been the best-selling one. Well, there it is. Much like video games, gamers don't, or much like movies, I should say, gamers don't care about critics. Gamers care about the games. They care about each other's opinion. They care about people that will play the games to completion and beat the games without throwing a fit about how difficult it is and how there needs to be a journalist mode for these video games because, oh, Metroid Dread was so hard. Yeah, I, I really, I actually applaud. This article does nothing but make me actually applaud gamers, who I usually throw a fit about. I won't lie. I'm normally one to talk about how gamers are part of the problem. Gamers are allowing these sorts of bad practices to continue in the gaming industry, they'll buy things day one, they will uh, you know, pre-order, and then the games will come out buggy, glitchy messes, and while all that is true, I'm gonna take a moment right now to say, good job gamers, I appreciate you, because at least you're doing what us movie fans also been doing for a long time, and that's judging the movie on the, you know, the merits of the film itself, on the art itself, instead of listening to these critics that only want to say what they can say for propaganda points, or for brownie points, or to show that they're the most sophisticated and intelligent individual individual in the room, and you gamers aren't having it. You're buying what you like, you're playing what you like, and you're voting with your wallet, and as a gamer and as a film goer, I can appreciate that. As a nerd, I can appreciate that, and I hope those of you watching see this trend, and you can appreciate it too. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below, or let me know on X, where you can find me at both the word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about video games, but anything nerdy. Movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at words of paradise underscore Leon and remember it's all here in the nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.